Hello students, welcome to lecture 24 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today we will be going into more details of uh, single and double negative metamaterials. So here is the lecture outline, we will give a brief introduction to this single and double negative metamaterials. We will also discuss about the wave propagation in uh, single negative or double negative media that is SNG and DNG media. We will also go into a bit of details of uh, double positive medium that is DPS, single negative, SNG medium and double negative that is a typo, this should be DNG, okay, DNG medium and uh, we will also look for the in-depth analysis of left hand metamaterials and discuss about negative refraction and some of its applications. So, in the previous lectures we have discussed about metamaterials. We understood that metamaterials are basically those materials which have engineered unit cells and these unit cells basically give you some control on the properties which are otherwise only found in natural materials or you can completely come up with exotic materials which are not found in nature. Something like you can um, design materials uh, with own customizable plasma frequency. You can also look for um, negative permittivity, negative permeability materials and so on. And why we are bothered about permittivity and permeability? The reason is the propagation of any electromagnetic wave through a linear isotropic medium is governed by these two parameters which is basically which are um, the electric permittivity epsilon and the magnetic permeability mu of that material. So, in general these quantities are frequency dependent and they are complex. Okay? And the wave properties such as propagation constant, velocity, attenuation constant, impedance, dispersion relation all these different properties can be easily obtained from epsilon and mu. And the science of the real and imaginary part of this epsilon and mu at a particular given frequency govern the various regions of free, uh, propagation. So, as, I, as we mentioned that uh, permittivity can be frequency dependent, mostly they are frequency dependent in almost every material and uh, they are also complex values. So, there is a real part, there is the imaginary part. So, depending on those you know real and imaginary components, you can find out that how the wave propagation takes place. Now, if you consider a media which has got a permeability mu which is real and positive, that means that particular medium does not support uh, magnetic absorption or amplification. Okay? So, in that case the wave propagation characteristics mainly depend on the signs of the real and imaginary parts of the permitti permittivity epsilon. Okay? So, in those materials epsilon uh, plays the most important role. Now, if you remember initially we have discussed that at uh, optical frequencies uh, most natural materials known to be non-magnetic. So, their, their mu you can simply take as uh, mu r okay, or you can say mu r is basically 1. So, mu is same as mu naught. Okay, they do not have any magnetic properties. So, in that case you know the real and imaginary part of the permittivity epsilon that depend or that dictates the wave propagation characteristics. Now, similarly if you think of the other extreme that where your permittivity is real and positive and you have a fixed value there. Okay? In that case, uh, the magnetic properties which is uh, described by mu, okay, that will dictate the nature of wave propagation. And magnetic media such as the media which includes some metal components that could carry induced electric currents and generate magnetic fields, they generally have a complex value of mu with the uh, real and imaginary part which may be either positive or negative. right? So, in most general case, uh, the manner in which the signs of the real and imaginary components of permittivity epsilon and permeability mu, they come up 
okay they will dictate the characteristics of wave propagation but usually you know the the contribution is not that you know uh, prominent it's subtle okay we'll look into some of these examples in this particular slide so if you remember this epsilon mu diagram that actually uh, classifies all different natural materials and metamaterials or everything can be classified from this uh, epsilon mu diagram okay so if if we confine ourselves mainly to lossless and passive media in which there is neither absorption nor gain we can say that we are basically operating away from dielectric and magnetic resonances okay and under these conditions you can say that you know epsilon and mu are real and their signs may be positive or negative and uh, when you think of those cases so when you have uh, you know permittivity to be the permittivity and permeability you if you consider them as real quantities you can have these four uh, possible variations the first one or the first quadrant as you can see here basically denote epsilon greater than 0 or and mu greater than 0 that means you are talking about double positive materials where both mu and epsilon are positive so in this case uh, this kind of materials are basically um, transparent and uh, they have a positive uh, refractive index and ordinary dielectric medium whatever you see all the common dielectrics they all fall under uh, this particular category okay of double positive uh, materials then the next category belongs to single negative materials where either epsilon or mu is uh, negative so in this particular case the second quadrant okay here uh, epsilon is negative mu is positive okay so this is basically it's a negative uh, permittivity um, materials this one but we can call this also as a single negative metamaterials this one also also single negative metamaterials but here uh, mu is basically negative and single negative metamaterials are basically opaque but they could support optical uh, surface waves at the boundaries with double positive materials so these are the simple example you can take as uh, the metals at uh, optical frequency they are basically um, this single negative uh, metamaterials okay or you can say single negative materials and they support surface waves which are also known as surface plus one uh, polaritons to propagate along the metal dielectric interface right so here are the examples so metals such as gold silver they exhibit uh, negative permittivity while maintaining positive permeability in the infrared and visible spectral region so when we talk about electrical uh, plasma those are basically we are talking about uh, metals at uh, optical frequency and one thing is that you know wave propagation is not permitted they basically support evanescent waves inside them however remember that on the surface you can actually on the surface with a double positive uh, material you can actually have some sort of you know surface waves which are basically the surface plus one polaritons now if you look into this particular uh, third quadrant the third quadrant you see both permittivity and uh, permeability are negative so these are called as double negative metamaterials and they are also called as uh, left-handed media we'll see that uh, in subsequent slides so all other quadrants the media is basically right-handed media um, uh, but in this particular quadrant the third quadrant okay um, here you can actually see that the e cross h they follow uh, left hand thumb rule okay so they also give rise to something which is completely um, un unnatural that is like negative refractive index and you can um, if you apply snell's law of refraction on um, a boundary between this kind of you know double negative and double positive kind of material you will see a negative uh, angle of refraction 
and that is something uh, completely shook the world with uh, you know surprise that this is something completely out of the world you can think of and you can also realize this using uh, the techniques that have been developed so you see uh, this kind of material also support you know wave propagation but the direction of wave propagation and the dire direction of the pointing vector here are opposite they are not in the same direction okay as you can see here the um, in this case the k vector that is the wave propagation happens in the backward direction whereas the energy propagates in the forward direction but if you look here in the case of double positive e cross h you know if you, you are using the left right hand thumb rule you are seeing that you know the wave propagation happens in the forward direction that is the right direction also energy propagates along the right direction s is basically the pointing vector so we'll look into that uh, very soon okay how the pointing vector is calculated and why these things are different in case of double positive and double negative materials now well let us look into some of the wave propagation characteristics in a, in a single negative and a double negative media so for simplicity we can consider a monochromatic plane wave with electric and magnetic uh, field amplitudes which are given by these vectors okay so let's consider er as e0 exponential minus j k dot r and hr is basically h0 exponential minus j k dot r okay so what is k here k is basically the wave vector so maxwell's equation then require these conditions to be satisfied to which is k cross h equals minus uh, omega epsilon uh, e naught and k cross uh, e naught is basically omega mu h naught so the knowledge of e can give you h the knowledge of h can give you e and that is how they are basically uh, interconnected right and from the information of uh, the wave vector you can also know about the associated wave number k okay which is basically the amplitude of this vector that can be related to omega square root of epsilon mu and another parameter which is the impedance that is basically the ratio of the magnitudes of the electric field amplitude and the magnetic field amplitude and you can calculate it as eta which is given as omega mu over k or simply you can write square root of mu over epsilon so eta can be directly written as square root of mu over epsilon so this is the formula and these are the uh, important characteristics of the wave propagation through any medium now the wave number that we have seen is generally complex right and we can always uh, break it into two parts you can write it as k equals beta minus j gamma so here beta and gamma both are real and uh, we can equate you know beta minus j gamma to the value of k we have seen in the previous slide that is omega square root of epsilon mu and uh, from that you can determine that beta is basically this one and in this case it is a lossless or um, medium so you can take uh, gamma equals zero so because there is no uh, imaginary part on the right hand side so what is beta again the beta is basically telling you that this is uh, the propagation constant so beta can be written as uh, omega by c okay and determines both the wave velocity c so c is basically c naught over n okay where n is the refractive index and gamma that we have discussed gamma is basically the field attenuation constant in this case the gamma is zero okay now we can consider the implications of these equations uh, for media in which you know epsilon and mu are real and they can be either or both negative so let let us investigate these cases so the first simple case that comes to our mind is a double positive medium so here both epsilon and mu are positive so you can simply uh, write the e and the h vectors and uh, wave propagation as i told you that the wave vector can be determined from the right hand rule 
okay so they actually form a right handed set e h and k they form a right handed set and uh, the wave front will uh, travel in the same direction of uh, the power flow okay that is the pointing vector so s and k are in the same direction so when you consider um, the double positive medium as we understood that uh, epsilon and mu both are positive so that your k and eta are also real and that gives you very simple case where gamma the attenuation constant is basically zero it means the amplitude of the wave will remain same as it propagates through this particular medium beta is a propagation constant that can be given as n times k naught k naught is the propagation constant in vacuum n is the refractive index of this medium that is basically the uh, square root epsilon r mu r so epsilon over epsilon naught is basically epsilon r mu over mu naught is basically mu r okay so from this you can find out these are very um, general and known formula and uh, you can also write that uh, eta eta is basically square root of uh, epsilon by uh, mu by epsilon okay so this is basically the impedance okay so support um, this kind of medium they support uh, tem waves so tm means you know the transverse electromagnetic waves so in this case both electric and magnetic fields are um, perpendicular to the direction of propagation that means your e h and k are mutually orthogonal and they will form a right handed system which we have discussed already okay now in this medium the last thing that remains is in the what is the direction of the energy flow so that you can de determine from the pointing vector s and s is um, calculated as half e naught cross with h naught conjugate okay so this is how you can compute what is the you know uh, direction of energy flow or power flow per unit area okay so you can see that uh, because e and uh, h they are forming a right hand system so you can actually see that s will also propagate in the same direction because both are positive in this case okay and um, they point in the same direction as the wave vector k and the intensity of the wave that is basically the power flow per unit area can be given as i which is real power of s and that can be given as modulus e naught square over 2 eta so that is how the intensity can be found out okay so intensity once again what is intensity it will be the you know power flow per unit area okay and power is nothing but energy per unit area sorry energy per unit time okay so here in power you get the time dependence and in intensity you are getting the area dependence as well okay and this diagram we have already discussed so this is how you got uh, your pointing vector and wave vector both going in the same direction now when you move to a single negative medium few things change now depending on whether your uh, permittivity or permeability which one is negative okay you can have k and eta both as imaginary okay so you can calculate gamma which is now um, omega square root of um, modulus of epsilon times modulus of uh, mu okay and when you compare it with the uh, wave vector you will see that the real part is not there so beta becomes zero okay so immediately you can conclude that this kind of medium they do not support wave propagation because the propagation constant is zero okay and there is a gamma gamma is basically the attenuation factor so this tells you the rate at which the wave will decay when the wave will enter this kind of a medium and this is the impedance of this particular medium that is given as j square root of um, modulus mu over modulus epsilon now these parameters correspond to uh, an exponentially decaying field that behaves as exponential minus gamma z so z is a propagation direction and as i told you gamma is basically the 
attenuation constant ok and this we have already discussed that because beta is 0 no propagating waves are supported in this medium and you can also find out the depth at which you know the wave will the amplitude of the wave or you can say the amp intensity of the wave is attenuated uh, by a factor of 1 by e and that happens at a depth of dp so that can be correlated to 1 by 2 gamma and uh, when you put you know the the other important factors in this equation that determines gamma you can write this as lambda naught over 4 pi square root of epsilon over epsilon naught the thing in modulus and then you have multiplied by uh, mu over mu naught okay modulus of that so this actually gives you the uh, penetration depth or the skin depth of that particular material and this is what we know about the skin depth of metal and other things okay the same same concept is there in the microwave domain as well okay and the imaginary impedance that we see here that indicates that there is a you know pi by 2 phase shift that j factor is there so that that gives you a pi by 2 phase shift between the electric and magnetic fields and when you calculate the pointing vector the pointing vector is basically half of uh, e cross h e naught cross h naught conjugate and this also comes out to be uh, imaginary and in that case if you try to calculate what is the intensity of this particular wave you will see that the intensity um, will be real part of uh, s and that is 0 that means no power is basically transported through this medium and that makes sense because the propagation constant is also 0. So, from that when you move on to the next uh, category which is basically double negative medium. So, you know that your permittivity and permeability epsilon and mu both are negative. So, when you do that you can actually see that what happens to k. The k is dependent on omega square root of modulus epsilon times modulus mu. If both are negative but there are modulus so actually k is real. So, you are actually having a k that is real that means beta will be n k naught and you are actually able to have wave propagation here gamma is 0 the attenuation constant is 0 ok and then n is given as minus square root of modulus e over epsilon naught times modulus mu over epsilon naught and you will see that is how you are actually getting a negative refractive index ok and the impedance of this media is given by square root of modulus mu over modulus epsilon fine so these are the important things so Always remember that in this kind of media wave propagation is possible, you can get negative refractive index, you can actually have no attenuation when the wave propagates ok and the choice of sign for the square roots is established by, so these are basically the sign right of the uh, square roots, whenever you take square root is plus minus right, but then when both are negative you can actually take the negative one ok. So, these are actually. Um, Choose, chosen in um, in a process by examining the direction of the vectors e naught, h naught and k and they may be directly determined from the Maxwell's equation as well to satisfy the Maxwell's equation ok. So, if you see the equations for electric field and magnetic field how they are interrelated in a double negative medium this is how the equations are now changed ok. So, you have k cross h naught which is basically omega modulus of epsilon e naught ok and k cross e naught is minus omega modulus of mu uh, h naught ok. So, just in the case we have seen for dps medium like double positive medium that e naught h naught and k are mutually orthogonal ok. So, here also you can try to establish this fact that they are also orthogonal ok. Just that you know there is some kind of sign that is reversed in the previous case the negative sign was here now the sign has come here right and that is where you know you have to exchange the roles of the electric and magnetic fields ok and that is how you can think of how to uh, draw the e h and k 
vectors in the case of a left handed medium. Right. So, it is apparent um, that E naught, H naught and K in a double positive media, they form a right handed set of vectors. Right. So, when you actually switch E and H field, that is what we see here, right, that because the negative sign was previously here, now it is here. So, you can actually exchange the roles of the electric and magnetic field. And if you do that, this is how you will get. Okay. So, in the double positive medium, E was here, H was here, but now you have switched their roles. Okay. And you actually got a left handed system. Why it is the left handed system? Because E cross H, okay, you have to you take your uh, fingers in the direction of E and roll it towards H, you will see that your thumb uh, is directing towards the K vector and this you can only do using your left hand. Okay? So, this is a left hand system. Now, when you compute uh, eta, you will see that the impedance eta is positive. Okay? However, the wave number K is taken to be negative and therefore, the refractive index also comes out to be negative. So, this kind of double negative materials are called DNG materials and they are also called NIM materials, negative index materials. So, okay, before we go there, yeah, here you can also see that the wave propagation happens in this direction, but when you take E cross H, okay, that happens in this direction, right. So, the wave propagation and uh, the pointing vector, they are in opposite direction. So, the energy flow will happen opposite direction of the wave propagation. So, if you put the, these two figures are actually showing the same thing, just that if you put it in the same uh, manner, the way you kept it for the double positive system. So, here you will see that everything else remains same other than the wave propagation direction which was on the towards right in the double positive system, here it changes to left, that is the only difference. Now, why this has happened? We have discussed that the equation has got a negative sign and uh, because the permittivities here are negative. So, if you put, if you absorb the neg negative sign into the magnetic field only. Okay. So, first we will look into the uh, Maxwell's equation here to start with that you have a material which has got uh, mu to be negative. So, mu is basically minus mu and uh, you have got a negative epsilon as well. So, epsilon is basically a minus epsilon. So, you have negative signs on both cases. Okay and you are trying to push this negative sign to the H factor, okay, H field. So, when you do that, you actually can get a, this kind of a system, okay. So, this system is basically a left handed system. So, only thing that you have done here is that negative uh, sign of permittivity and permeability, you are pushing it to the uh, H vector, so that the H vector will flip its sign. But then when you put it in the handedness, so K is perpendicular to E and that should be now perpendicular to minus H. In a double positive system, this was basically H, here it is a minus H okay? and that is all. So, this gives you a left handed system. If you consider the K vector in more details and try to uh, split it uh, in the real part and the imaginary part. Okay, you can actually get this kind of a diagram where you can also consider your uh, epsilon to be complex, mu to be complex. So, this is the overall situation. So, epsilon complex will have a real part that we will call as epsilon prime. It will have an imaginary part that is epsilon double prime. Okay. Similarly, mu will also, mu is a complex number. So, mu can also have real and imaginary that is mu prime and mu double prime. And you can see here that these are the region. So, this is the boundary that tells us okay, where that this portion will be right hand material. So, you have uh, epsilon prime mu double prime plus epsilon double prime mu prime 
less than 0 ok and when this is satisfied here it is a light, right hand material below this in the different color that you see this is basically left hand material right ok and another important factor that you can see from this graph is that this is the portion where uh, you can actually have uh, so this this is the region where you can have propagating waves ok these two cases so you can actually find out how you land up here by the choice of materials ok and in these two cases you have propagating waves if you do not satisfy so here wh what will be the um, line here so this particular uh, line is basically telling you that on this side it is epsilon prime mu double prime plus epsilon double prime mu prime has to be greater than 0 ok so it is a positive one and this also tells you that uh, you know you have this this quantity should be negative ok and if this two satisfies you actually get a evanescent wave here ok and that is where um, you know the waves are like evanescent waves cannot propagate they will be simply dying ok you can get propagating waves here you can also get propagating waves here ok and you can get evanescent wave in this particular region again ok so that is how you can um, actually read this particular graph that depending on because in all other cases we have not considered uh, epsilon and mu to be complex but if you have uh, epsilon mu to be complex you can actually um, calculate this and see where your material is landing and you can uh, from this chart you can find out whether it will be a uh, evanescent wave it will be a propagating wave if, if it is a propagating wave uh, sorry if it is an evanescent wave in a uh, normal medium it will decay right normal medium in the sense if it is a um, dps medium or if it is a single negative medium it will decay but if it is an evanescent wave in a, um, a negative index material or double negative material the evanescent waves will grow ok instead of decaying they will grow so all this information you can actually obtain from this particular graph which is a plot between the real part and the imaginary parts of the web number so if you remember from the previous lecture that how do we realize this kind of negative handed or left handed uh, meta materials the first thing is that we can actually go with uh, wire based uh, arrays and uh, this can give us uh, negative uh, permittivity over a certain frequency range and you can also decide by the by changing the dimension and the array uh, periodicity that what will be the plasma frequency below which uh, the material will behave like a metal we have also seen this case where you we have designed an array of split ring resonators and that could give us negative uh, you know uh, negative permeability but always remember these are kind of complex values so we are basically oh, there is a typo here this is basically a mu r ok and uh, we are looking into the real part of the permeability ok in the previous case also we have actually seen into this region the shaded region which is basically showing the real part of the permittivity ok so here also we are bothered about the real part of the permeability which is negative for a very small uh, you know for a very small frequency range now if you want to make a meta material which has got both uh, negative permittivity and negative permeability in the same frequency window what do you have to do you have to take this one and also this one both are having negative values at the same wavelength range ok and you can add them up together so here you can see so it is starting from 1 to say 1.5 here also 1 to 1.5 these are normalist frequencies so they, have, they, they can be um, matched and you can see that this and this if they are combined they will probably give you what you are looking at 
you can make a combined array of this and you will be able to get negative permittivity as well as negative permeability over a certain frequency window and that will give you negative refractive index. Now, this negative refractive index uh, also gives rise to uh, some exotic effects something like negative or inverse Doppler shift. Now, what is Doppler shift? I believe all of you are aware of Doppler shift. It is basically the effect in light or sound. Okay? You can have Doppler shift and sound as well. So, if you consider Doppler shift in light here, it is uh, observed as a shift um, to shorter or bluer wavelengths when the light originates from objects which is moving towards us at a very great speed. Okay? In terms of frequency, you can say the frequency increases or the wavelength is decreasing and that is why it, it is shifting towards shorter bluer wavelengths. Okay? The opposite effect will happen when the source moves away from us, the frequency decreases that will, that means the shift will be towards longer or red wavelength. Okay? So, that is what the blue shift is seen when the object moves towards us and uh, red shift is seen when uh, the object moves away from us and this is how a normal um, you know, Doppler shift works in a right handed material. Now, if you want uh, to observe inverse Doppler shift, it means there the particles that make up a wave need to move in one direction, but the intensity variation of the light's peak and valleys in the wave that should shape the other. Okay? So, that should move in the other direction. So, that can only happen in some kind of you know material which is not naturally found. Okay? So, usually uh, there are natural materials in which intensity variation uh, moves slower than the particles in it, but materials in which they will move in the opposite direction, they do not exist in nature. Okay? It means you can only realize them using some artificial structures and that is where some unique things are seen using uh, this kind of uh, left handed materials. Okay. So, here is one example. So, this is one beam uh, directed at the detector via a medium which has got a positive refractive index and in this case it is again identical beam which is uh, passing through a photonic crystal with negative refractive index and it can actually show us the reverse or inverse Doppler effect. Now, how it works? Let me explain. Here, the photonic crystal was mounted on a platform that moved toward the detector at a, at a constant speed and the Doppler shifts were measured from the interference patterns of the beams at the detectors and this could give us a clear verification of the inverse Doppler effect at optical wavelength. So, here when the source was moving towards the detector, you were seeing red shift instead of a normal blue shift. So, that is what you were able to see. So, here you will see red shift and when it is going away, you are supposed to see blue shift, but you are seeing, uh, sorry, you are supposed to see red shift, but you are seeing blue shift. Okay? So, I believe this uh, diagram is clear. So, uh, when the source is moving towards the detector with some velocity, Okay, the frequency should increase or the wavelength should get shorter. So, it should become blue. You can see the squeezing of the pulse here. That means, the frequency has increased or the wavelength has decreased. And when the source is moving away from the detector in this direction, if it moves, the frequency re reduces. It means, the wavelength increases. Okay? Whereas, it happens completely opposite in case of a negative hand negative index material or left handed material. Now, left handed materials also produce negative refraction. Now, refraction is already known to all of us since school days. It is a very, very interesting phenomena. If you look into this particular image, this is what we have seen in our school days many, many times. Also, naturally, if you stick a you know pipe in a juice 
um, glass you can you will be able to uh, straw you put you will see this kind of a uh, effect right so there is a bending starting from the interface and this particular diagram actually indicates or compares the case where both the materials are uh, positive materials double positive materials but in this case case b here one material is basically a negative refractive index material so when when you are taking that what happens in the normal case you see the arrow okay is showing the direction of wave vector and no the broken line the broken line with arrows this one the broken line with arrows show the direction of the wave vector that is that will show you the k vector and the solid lines with arrows indicate the direction of energy flow okay so here you can see the uh, here the energy flow is happening this way but the wave vector will move in the opposite direction in this case you know the energy flow also happens this way but and the wave vector is also the wave is also moving in the same direction but here the wave will be seen moving in the backward direction so when you actually um, produce a image of the same straw in the glass but this time it is not water instead of water water has got refractive index of what 1.3 so here we are considering you know negative index water that means n is uh, minus 1.3 and in that case this is how the banding will take place so it will band on the same side of the normal and it will look like this so let us look into an in-depth analysis of the negative refraction so first of all that we have uh, studied in our school days that the refraction of light at the boundary between two ordinary uh, dps media they obey the Snell's law. So, Snell's law as you know it can be written as n1 sin theta 1 equals n2 sin theta 2 and uh, in this case you know this, this particular equation is coming from matching the components of the wave vectors k1 and k2 along the direction of the boundary. Now, if one of this media say medium 2 is, uh, is replaced by a double negative medium which has got a negative refractive index of n2 in that case the equation looks like this so you will have n1 sin theta 1 equals minus modulus of n2 sin theta 2 now this reveals that the angle of refraction theta 2 in the case of a double negative medium that angle should be negative and the refracted waves and the incident waves they will lie on the same side of the normal to the boundary and this outcome can also be understood as it is arising from matching the components of the wave vectors k1 and k2 along the direction of the boundary so let's look into uh, one figure that shows that so it is understood and clear that the optics of planar boundaries and lenses they get significantly altered when a dps medium is basically replaced by a dng medium right so if you for example if you take a convex lens which is made of dng material that will behave like a concave lens made of uh, dps material and vice versa and if you look pictorially what happens um, the planar boundary okay between positive and negative materials they actually focus uh, they, they possess uh, focusing power so let us look into this figure in little bit more details so here we are considering two positive uh, refractive index materials so n1 n2 both are positive so n1 is shown in a lighter shade so this is basically a lower refractive index than n2 and this is the direction with which um, k1 the wave is incidenting okay this is theta 1 okay so you can find out uh, this is the cos theta component and this is the sin theta component okay and this is the refracted ray this is angle uh, theta 2 so you can also see that this is the sin theta component so this is how you are basically matching the components of the wave vector along the boundary and that gives you that Snell's law equation okay 
So, here one important thing to mark is that though the direction slightly bends, but the propagation of wave k1 happens in this direction and k2 slightly bends, but it still moves in the similar direction. Now, if you replace this medium, this n2 medium with a negative index medium and say you are having n2 same as minus n1, in that case what can be seen that theta 2 will be same as minus theta 1. So, the refracted ray will also lie on the same side of the normal, it will not go to the other side, it will lie on the same side. Energy flow will happen along this direction, but the wave propagation in this media will happen in the backward direction. So, here you can see k1 is falling on the interface, but you will see k2 it is it looks like as if it is propagating backward, but the energy is flowing in the opposite direction. So, this is how negative refraction takes place. Okay? So, the planar boundary that acts on the optical ray in the same way as does a com convex spherical boundary between two DPS medium. So, here using a uh, you know planar boundary between a uh, DPS and DNG medium, you are basically creating a lens which is otherwise created by a convex spherical boundary if you consider only DPS medium. So, this kind of meta materials will encourage you to have planar optical components and that saves a lot of space when you try to uh, design compact optical or integrated uh, photonic systems. Moreover, for uh, DPS and DNG medium with permittivities and permeabilities having the same magnitudes, so if you consider epsilon 2 to have same as epsilon 1 but negative, so epsilon 2 is minus epsilon 1 and mu 2 you can consider as minus mu 1. In this cases, the impedance eta 1 will be square root of mu 1 epsilon 1 and eta 2 will be square root of mu 2 epsilon 2 and they both will be uh, equal and the same sign. So, in that case what happens? No reflection will occur at the boundary okay, at any inclination regardless of the polarization. That means, you are able to then pass all the light ray that is falling on that kind of interface to the other side of the interface and you can get rid of all the you know reflection losses. So, that is also a big big advantage of this kind of materials. So, with that we will stop here and in the next lecture we will go into more details of the examples using negative index materials such as uh, perfect lens. Thank you.